start the short tafsir of these verses that we recited. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the understanding and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the tawfiq to uh, act upon these verses. So it begins from the first verse where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu attaqu allaha haqqa tuqatihi wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimoon. O believers, fear Allah. Be mindful of the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the way he deserves to be and وَلَا تَمُوتُنَّ إِلَّا وَأَنْتُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ Do not leave this dunya, do not the die in other words uh, but except in the condition that you are Muslims and you are those people who surrender to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so the verse begin, begins from the حَقَّ تُقَاتِهِ يَا أَيُوَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا اتَّقُوا اللَّهَ حَقَّ تُقَاتِهِ O believers, Allah is calling you and I believe, believing people. يَا أَيُوَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا But it, now, now if, you, if we can think about and ponder over this um, quality and sort of, you know, this address that Allah is uh, calling you and I that all oh, you who who believe in me so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in other words is uh, giving a reference to the beautiful relationship that we as believing people and believers have with him so in other words that's the reference Allah is using and then he is uh, uh, talking to us so that's really uh, sweet and beautiful and that's a very strong reference to make Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is making here and so he says what, what what he orders us and what he asks us is the fact that ittaqullah be cautious of the presence of Allah taqwa is what we are trying to achieve inshallah through fasting because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that oh believing people oh believers you uh, the fasting is being prescribed for you the way it was done for the people before you so that you become muttaqeen, you become God conscious, you become mindful of Allah. This is quite important, okay? So fasting is not for worshipping. Worshipping, dhikr, tilawa, all these are different things to create the quality of taqwa within ourselves. But if we look at the uh, um, the purpose of the fasting, Allah says, لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ You fast so that you become mindful of the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So taqwa is to stay away from haram, is to stay away from something which is impermissible. So in other words, it's, it's good to do tahajjud and tilawatul Qur'an and all the ibadat and helping other people. This is, this is must. But the ultimate you know, purpose of fasting is not that. The ultimate purpose of fasting, okay, is taqwa, is to stay away from sins. And so let's just promise ourselves, inshallah, also, that, you know, that um, we should f spend this Ramadan a sin-free Ramadan, a sin-free. And alhamdulillah, we are staying at, staying at homes and, and we are um, in this lockdown with more and more with our families and alhamdulillah there are pro probably more, less chances of committing sins compared to people who would go out and about a lot. Um, so inshallah, we, we, we helped. Shayateen and devils are chained and the environment is prepared for us to stay away from sins. So in this uh, uh, ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is calling you and I, the believing people, to be mindful of Allah. Okay? And then another word uh, that comes next is and, and follows is tuqati. The way Allah deserves to be mindful of, deserves to be, you know, uh, uh, afraid of, in other words. But taqwa is not fear. Taqwa is basically to be cautious of.
uh, uh, his presence. And, 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 and anybody who acquires that quality is somebody who succeeded because that's what we need. You know, anytime and every time we move around in our day to day lives, we need to be mindful of the fact that somebody is watching us, that Allah is with us. So we are reassured that we are helped by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's nothing to be afraid of. And secondly, we should not go near anything that is haram because Allah is always watching us. So it's a, it's a beautiful connection that we have with Allah and we're so lucky, subhanAllah, to have that. So what does it mean then, haqqa tuqatihi? How can we uh, be um, you know, mindful of Allah the way uh, he deserves to be mindful of? So we see the mufassireen, the muhaddithin, the uh, tabi'een, uh, and their, their students and sahaba, in tafsir of this ayah, haqqa tuqatihi, they say, that actually it, <coughs> it means uh, three you know, main things. Number one, ayyuta'a fala yu'sa. So Allah is worshipped and he is never uh, disobeyed. So let's just uh, reiterate this fact you know, uh, and this uh, point in our, in our minds that we should worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all the time. Obey him, whatever he asks us to do, and we should not disobey him. Number one. Number two, uh, and he is remembered and not forgotten. Yeah. So at every step of our life, we remember Allah, whether we um, are in masjid or outside the masjid, whether we are in our businesses, in our jobs, in any other places we go to, we remember Allah. Okay. In the morning we say, well, that's remembering Allah. Alhamdulillah, ladhi ahyana ba'da ma amata. And then you, you, you read Fajr. You, you try to eat something, you say, Bismillah. Yeah, you go to sleep, you know, you, you say the dua. Alhamdulillah, you, you're Muslim, you say that dua. Allahumma bismika amutu ahya. You go out of your house, <coughs> you recite the beautiful dua that uh, Bismika Allahumma amu, uh, Bismillahi tawakkaltu ala Allah. Everything a Muslim does he or she always remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, when she was asked about the Prophet sallallahu she said, kana ya, kana fi kulli ahyanihi, or kama call it, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam <coughs> would remember Allah all the time, all the time. So the scholars say, how do we remember Allah all the time? Well, we read those beautiful du'as, yeah? So we, we, we get up um, and onto our car, we say, Subhanallah, Sakharana Haza, and Alhamdulillah, and Allahu Akbar. So all these are the du'as, and even going to toilet, you don't remember Allah within the toilet, and you don't do zikr, but if you say, you know, the, the A'udhu Billahi Min Al-Khubithi Wal Khaba'ith, and coming out, Ghufranaka, the whole time is counted, and inshallah is a, uh, remembrance of Allah and dhikr of Allah. And the beautiful thing about the dhikr of Allah, by the way, is that فَذْكُرُونِي أَذْكُرْكُمْ Allah says, when you remember me, I will remember you, yeah? So that's why one of the scholars, uh, Ibn Uthman, uh, uh, said that, um, I know when Allah remembers me. And the students ask him, how do you say that? Nobody would, uh, you know, how would you know that Allah remembers you? And Allah you know, mentions your name. He says, well, because when I remember Allah, that means Allah remembers me. Because Allah says, If you mention my name, I'll mention your name. Yeah. So this is a beautiful, again, relationship um, that we have, alhamdulillah, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the third thing they say is, وَيُشْكَرَ فَلَا يُكْفَرُ He should be thanked and people must not be ungrateful and unthankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So obeying him, not disobeying him in, in, in everything, and remembering him, not forgetting him, and uh, uh, thanking him and not, you know, becoming unthankful to him. These are major things that we need to do. And if inshallah, and if we will have done that, we will have, you know, um, worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, and be mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, some scholars, although say that this ayah has been abrogated uh, because nobody would be able to remember Allah, to be mindful of Allah and fear Allah the way he deserves to be. So then they quote another verse in Surah Taqabun, uh, verse number 16, which says, 
Fear Allah and be mindful of Allah as much as you can. As much as you can, because obviously we are weak and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, we, we, we will forget at times, we will commit things, we will become ungrateful, not deliberately, obviously, but out of mistake, out of forgetfulness. So then Allah says, well, do it the way. So for example, um, I am not able to fast, yeah, due to my uh, weakness or illness or, or anything like that. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, well, you're allowed not to fast and you pay fidya or you make it up later. So if you are suffering from disease, then you could do that. So this is the way uh, those scholars interpret this verse as well. And then the next uh, verse begins um, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, well, in the same verse, Allah says, Do not uh, die except you're Muslims. I mean, this is not in our uh, uh, capacity or, or, or this is not our power to stop ourselves leaving this dunya. But what does this mean? Do not die unless you are a Muslim. Well, what it means is that you should always be prepared, yeah? And, and you should always be ready to leave this dunya, yeah? So you should always be uh, 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 on Islam because you don't know when exactly are you going to leave this life and go to the near, to, 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 the, uh, to the hereafter. So that's why if we try our best to be on the uh, straight path, then that what it means, do not die except that you are uh, Muslims. The next verse is also very uh, important uh, of Surah Al-Imran, verse number 103, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands you and I, وَاعْتَصِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا To hold on tightly to the rope of Allah, Hablullah which is the deen of Allah, which is Qur'an, the kitab Allah, jami'an, together, wala tafarraqu, and do not scatter around. Do not have ikhtilaf and, you know, um, split between yourselves. Do not be divided, because divisions uh, cause really, really big troubles, and, and they did cause troubles, if you look at the Muslim history, Muslim Ummah, uh, it always the problem is not the enemy as much as it is our own selves that we are divided on different issues that we need to be united uh, by and, and on. And so Allah says, the, the way to be united is to use the Hablullah. So Hablullah, according to the hadith, is Kitabullah. Kitabullah al mamdudu this is the uh, rope of Allah, which is the book of Allah that is coming from Allah to the uh, ground that we have. So we, if we hold on to the one uh, end of this rope, which is the book of Allah, then the other rope is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so we have this hope that we will reach our destination, which is the Jannah, which is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah says, وَاعْتَصِمُوا uh, بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا And do not uh, be divided. And small and, and little, little things that people fight over, it's a pity to see, for example, uh, you know, the way people pray, the way, uh, uh, these are all the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's ways of establishing the prayer whether somebody is is uh, is raising his hand somebody is not whether somebody is saying amin loudly after behind the imam and somebody is not this, this, this there's nothing to fight over somebody uh, some people have started uh, a rosa and fasting on friday and others started it on saturday but what, why fight shaitan exactly is looking for for these kind of pit holes, for these kind of loopholes and for these kind of, you know, um, uh, weaknesses that we humans have. If a person is doing something for the sake of Allah, I cannot question his um, uh, sincerity because intention is in the heart. Yeah. And so if I'm doing it the other way or another day, then I, I do not have the authority to challenge someone else's intention. And so long as there is a leeway, so long as there is a room for ikhtilaf and for the difference of opinion, alhamdulillah, 
the Ummah has always had ikhtilaf in different masail. Yeah, this is not the first ikhtilaf to fast on different days, for example, and this is not going to be the last one. People have been doing it, but people have already always tolerated others, others. but now people out of ignorance or any other things, you know, people um, they just, subhanAllah, they're up in arms. Um, so that's what Allah says, do not be like that, do not fight with each other, do not call each other uh, non-Muslims and, and so on and so forth. So this is exactly um, what shaitan wants and, and we become weak and weak because Allah says jami'an, you should hold on to the rope of Allah together. وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا And do not, and this is what the Prophet Sallallahu says, the Banu Israel, the children of Israel, they were divided into 71 groups. Yeah, and وَأُمَّتِ سَتَفْتَرِقُوا سَتَفْتَرِقُوا عَلَى إِثْنَيْنِ وَسَبْعِينَ And Jama'a, uh, my Ummah Firqa will be divided into 72 Firq and 72 uh, different groups. And all of them will go to fire except one and when he was asked which group that one najiha is that will go to jannah and the prophet ﷺ said uh, al jamaa the mainstream people who are sticking together the majority of the muslims will never go astray yeah people in fringes like those who we have seen in the recent past and even now who are fighting for the sake of allah but on the wrong path, the Khawarijiyat and the Daesh and the ISIS and whatnot. They interpret the same Quran, subhanAllah. But because they do not follow the, the major uh, mainstream school of thought of Islam, which are major four schools of thought, then perhaps they will be an easy prey for shaitan. Because obviously when you interpret the Quran, I cannot just take this Quran and say, well, I interpret this Quran because of my opinion and this is my no you, you 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 are entitled to your opinion but you can't explain quran now you know differently um the way different to the way the sahaba did it radiallahu anhu who are the students of the prophet different to the way um tabi'een and and taba tabi'een and those who followed the sahaba and their students the students of their students and imam bukhari rahimullah and, and the likes of those guys you you, you cannot do that yeah uh, in modern research by the way the 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 the, the more uh, latest is the research the latest the research the more authentic uh, it, it is considered to be they say it's it's uh, it's the latest research it's a modern research and but in Islamic scholarship, the oldest, you know, is the uh, riwayah and narration, uh, the more authentic, the oldest and the older is the book, the more authentic it is because it's closer to the glorious time to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So um, whatever the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam followed, whatever the Sahaba followed is the authentic way and is the Jama'ah, inshallah. And it doesn't mean that you know, people and different groups, for example, we, we see all these different groups today. Um, this is not our topic, but of course, I'm just going to cover it um, very briefly, touch upon it. Um, it's not that this group will go to this and that. No, all of these groups who are the mainstream uh, groups who are following different schools of thought and uh, Alhamdulillah, they, they, they follow the same Quran and Hadith. They're all fine. Yeah. So, uh, and so people within those groups who are sincere people and sincerely they, um, they you know, uh, follow the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and they will be, you know, uh, considered um, within that group which will uh, be saved from the hellfire, inshallah. So in another hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, مَا أَنَا عَلَيْهِ وَأَصْحَابِي The path that I follow and my ashab, my uh, companion, my sahaba as they follow, is the path that will lead to inshallah uh, jannah so this is very important that we keep in mind and then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions <coughs> in the next uh, uh, verse that um wadhkuru ni'matallahi alaykum remember the blessing of allah upon you if kuntum a'da'an when you were enemy and fa'allafa bayna qulubikum so allah has put love and this sort of you know uh, uh, 
togetherness in your hearts. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put love in your hearts, love of each other uh, in your hearts. So for asbahtum bi ni'mati ikhwana, you became because of the bounty and, and mercy and blessing of Allah, brothers. And further, wa kuntum ala shafa hufratim min al nar, you, O oh my you know, Sahaba, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is asked to tell the Sahaba that you were on the brink and edge of the um, uh, hellfire. Ala shafa hufratim min al nar, that trench and that pit of the uh, fire, which is hellfire, you were about to fall in there. And so Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala saved you, yeah? Allah has saved you from that, uh, uh, you know, fire. Allah, such is Allah who is explaining his verses to you so you um, be guided. So this is what Allah says to people who were fighting with in Aus and Khazraj. We know that Aus and Khazraj, the two big tribes, they used to fight with each other all the time. All the time, you know, some of the, the 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 wars continue for 120 years. For 120, their own brothers and cousins, and 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 they used to fight for for pity things, for just small and and you know little uh, invaluable stuff. They used to fight. Harbul Basus, which continued for more than 40 years, began just for a small chicken that went into somebody's field and. And, and, and he killed that chicken and, and, and that's when it started. So people used to be so much, you know, uh, um, up in arms with each other and killing and all that. But Allah says, now look at you, you became brothers. And SubhanAllah, we saw when they migrated from Mecca to Medina, what happened? They sacrificed each other's, SubhanAllah, uh, their, their lives for each other. They, they presented sacrifice, sacrifices for each other. They split their houses. If somebody had two houses, he gave one to the other brother. SubhanAllah. If somebody had two houses, he, he, they halved their properties with others and, and, and the, uh, the Muhajireen and the Ansar. So they became brother. Some of us mentioned and they say that here Ni'mah is the, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Because of the blessing of the Prophet Sallallahu you and I also are brothers. We are brothers in faith. And this is quite important to realize that Allah has made us brothers. So the brotherhood that we have is the brotherhood of faith. And that's why Allah is, is commanding us to not to be divided and be united. And because we are brothers, like Surah Hajarat mentions that إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ إِخْوَةً believing people are brothers the real relationship that we have between ourselves is the relationship brotherhood and sisterhood so that's very important and then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues to say your duty is to enjoin the good and forbid the bad call to 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 the to the good which is islam and these are the successful these are the successful people so your legacy and my legacy and particularly in the Brit in britain and these islands yeah is islam if we are firmly holding on to the rope of allah together and calling others to islam then perhaps we are fulfilling our duty otherwise to earn more money to build more houses to buy more expensive cars is not your legacy it's not going to be you know you're not going to be remembered for that there are far more rich richer people than you and i and so what we need to leave as a legacy is to build the houses of allah is to build people's akhirah to build our own akhirah for the sake of allah and this is why you know muslims we cannot give these people uh, technology or you know medical advancements or whatnot what we can give them inshallah is the spiritual relationship with Allah and that's the void that people are having today so what we need to do is to think about the purpose of our life and existence amidst this community that we're living in that what is it that we can give them and that, that they, they don't they don't have so subhanallah people are craving wallahi people are craving the loneliness particularly now in this lockdown people have been in the lockdown long before this the biggest killer you know in the modern world and in the uk 
uh, has been loneliness. People have been always like that. And so now we appreciate that. How can we come out of this to help others to come out of that loneliness? Mental health, you know, the, the antidepressants uh, uh, and people know has been doubled. The, the subscriptions yeah, of the antidepressant has been almost doubled within the last 10 years in this country. So what does that tell you? Yeah, what does that tell you? And, and, and Muslim community is not exempt. Muslim community also has been having trouble with mental health, mental health and, and, and it's been soaring. And, and, and the reason is because we are not connected to our faith. We are not, um, yes, we're reading Quran and we're listening to, to scholars talking to us and everything, but perhaps we are not, you know, uh, hammering in and, and bringing in the, the real message of Islam, which is to have peace within ourselves and help others to have that peace, subhanAllah. If you do not have the peace uh, within yourselves, then how can you pass on that peace to others? And Allah is the source of peace. So the more stronger we are connected to Allah and Quran, because how can we otherwise be connected to Allah? It's with the Quran that we can, we can you know, be connected to Allah. So the month of Ramadan is here to, to strengthen that connection through Quran with Allah. And so inshallah, if we, uh, um, uh, pass on that message uh, first to, to, to have it ourselves and then pass on that message to our younger generations and our coming you know, uh, generations that inshallah they, their iman will be saved within those masajid and scholars and, 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 and spiritual gatherings and the dhikr of Allah and they will also be able to have strong personality yeah? because it's very good to be a pious person yeah and to, to raise your children with piety and taqwa, very important. But to give them a stronger personality for them to be proud of their identity is what we need. Yeah, A stronger Muslim, the Prophet ﷺ says, is always better than the weaker one and both are on good path, inshallah. So if we are going to be uh, um, um, near any success, um, because it's, it's, it's the fight of survival on these islands for the time being, then we have to go back to the basics and, and, and that is Quran. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking to us that I have saved you the different tribes and you are brothers, yeah? You're stronger with each other. You are supporting each other. So even in the lockdown, we, you know, inshallah, try to get connected with others through different means. Subhanallah, these are fantastic technological advancements. And, and imagine if you didn't have them, while you were on, you know, uh, in lockdown, it would be really a disaster. But Alhamdulillah, we are connected with Allah. We are connected with Allah. And if you have a Quran with you, what else you need? Subhanallah. So that's what Allah says. And He says, these are the successful people who call others to the to the path of Allah. And then again, Allah says, Do not be like those who divided themselves. The Jews and the Christians, the people of the past, they they split and they had divisions and rifts <clears throat> and they 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 disagreed with each other's they had that ikhtilaf after they received the verses and the signs and the um, you know uh, evidences from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the proofs from allah they will have a great uh, and dreadful rather punishment and allah then talks about the day of the um, judgment like i said the three main themes of quran are oneness of allah the uh, messengerhood and then the hereafter so this verse mentions now the day of judgment the day of qiyamah is a day where some faces will become black and, and others will become white that's an expression to mean that people will be so you know uh, miserable and there are other people who are going to be so joyful and joyous and and happy and 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 having like you know cheerful faces so that means white faces and so those people who will be having miserable and black faces did you disbelieve after your iman now you need to the you know taste the punishment after that your kufr those who will be having cheerful and white faces 
فَفِي رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ هُمْ فِيهَا خَالِدُونَ They'll be in the mercy of Allah forever. They'll be there forever, ever, ever. And Allah then says, تِلْكَ آيَاتُ اللَّهِ نَتْلُوهَ عَلَيْكَ بِالْحَقِ These are Allah's verses He recites to you, uh, over to you with truth. وَمَ اللَّهُ يُرِيدُ ظُلْمًا لِلْعَالَمِينَ Allah is not unjust to the people. People are unjust to themselves. Allah is not unjust. Allah is always just. And then it says, وَلِلَّهِ مَا فِي السَّمَوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَإِلَى اللَّهِ تُرْجَعُ الْأُمُورِ وَإِلَى اللَّهِ تُرْجَعُ الْأُمُورِ To Allah belongs whatever is in the heavens and the earth. And to Allah is going to return everything. Whatever we have is going to go back to Allah. He's the only one, you know, um, remaining at the end and everybody else is, is vanishing. And then Allah is talking to you and I that we are the best of Ummah. Our job is to serve the humanity. Our job is to save the humanity. Our job is to help and, and support the humanity by calling them to the truth, which is Islam, by serving them in any way, shape or form we could. But the best thing is that you enjoy the good, you forbid the bad, and you believe in Allah. And Allah says that if the people of the book did this before you, it was it would have been better for them. Some of them are believing people, but most of them are disobedient people. So to finish, inshallah, um, you know, this uh, duty that Allah has given us in his book is to call other people um, and to Islam. And because of that, Allah has termed this ummah, you and I, the best of the ummah. For Nas is not Muslims. Nas is Jews, Christians, atheists, Hindus, Sikhs, anybody. So Allah says that you're the best ummah. Why? Because you are out and about. You're outreaching to people of any background any race any community and so what's your job to do you are enjoying the good you stand up for good yeah that's why many people many forces do not like islam why they do not like especially the political islam they do not like the islam which talks the people who talks about you know uh, uh, stopping the, the the injustices we have to stand up for justice and always be up okay uh, uh, legally within the boundaries of the laws of the country we are living in to oppose the injustices uh, that is that are committed against people whether that's in palestine whether that's in xinjiang whether that's in kashmir whether that's in syria or iraq or yemen wherever injustices are committed by others we will oppose them whether they are committed by muslims or non-muslims the Quran always asks you to stand up and talk about them. Whether domestic violence is happening within the Muslim households, we are the ones who to report them. Whether drug selling is going on, which is also injustice and oppressing others, we are supposed to be raising a voice against that, whether it's done by a Muslim or non-Muslim. I don't care. Allah says, be you know, uh, 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 righteous and stand for justice and call people to the good and enjoying the good and forbid the bad. So this is our duty. Quran, Islam, Ramadan, our religion, Alhamdulillah is all about spirituality, is all about worshipping Allah and everything. But more importantly is to go out and, you know, enjoying the good and forbid the bad. And so that before it reaches our household, before it reaches our children, we are going to protect and, and sort of, you know, um, um, to stop them and nip them in the bed as they say and that's the hukum of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in any way shape or form we're not all equal some people are politically involved others are socially uh, active and many people are subhanallah in other fields some are writing in the newspapers and so on and so forth so we need to train and raise our children with this mentality they, they always stand for justice and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthen our iman may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq and ability uh, to uh, keep fasting and getting closer and closer to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala qulukum li hada wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa sa'id muslimin assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu just a very short dua because of the time rabbana zalamna anfusana wa lam taghfir lana wa tarhamna la nakunu min al-khasirin wallah accept our fast wallah accept our taraweeh wallah accept our duas wallah accept our ibadat Allah uh, take us away from the 
uh, hellfire, O oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, enable us to read Quran, understand Quran, practice upon Quran, and reach this Quran, inshallah, take it to other people. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, give uh, cure and shifa to those who are ill. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive uh, our sins and the sins of those people who passed away. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthen and help those who are in this uh, isolation. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help the humanity uh, uh, lift lift this uh, uh, virus from the humanity. Allahumma inna nas'aluka min khayri ma sa'alaka min abdika wa nabika Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa na'udhu bika min shari ma sa'alaka min abdika wa nabika Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa anta al-musta'an wa alayka al-balaag wa la hawla wa la quwata illa billahi al-alazim subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun wa salamun ala al-musayin alhamdulillah wa bil'amin al-fatiha jazakullah khair salamun